Uh, we're fishing. No, was it? Sunday. I kept standing I saw you Sunday afternoon. No. Good stuff. Was that Thursday? That was Thursday. We'll go over what you missed the shot. Actually, I didn't see you last week. You didn't see me? No. I think I played. Yeah. Oh, Wednesday you played. Yeah. Wednesday. The Wednesday was the last day I played. Oh, we shot that. Is it 10 10 now? It's 10 10 now. It's fast. Okay. So you guys owe me some minutes, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, we're moving in the book. Good to see you guys all here. All of you also on Zoom. Inshallah, next time join us in person. Last week, we talked about al-Haqiqah. We said that kalam is broken into two parts. Literal and metaphors or figurative. So we had al-majaz wa al-haqiqa, and we went over al-haqiqa. We said al-haqiqa is the things that stay, the first definition that he gives, ma baqiya ala mawdu'ihi, the way that the word was intended, its usage continues. So just the way that the people of language intended it, that's how it's used, then we would say, this is a word that is haqiqa. The second definition that he gives, he says, مَسْتُعْمِلَ فِي مَسْتُرِحَ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْمُخَاطِبَةِ That the next one is the people that are speaking, how they define the word. So the person that is coming, like when you say a word, that word that you are using, the meaning that you have agreed to it. And this second definition works better if we look at the three ways that a word is حقيقي. The three ways in which we define a word to be, you know, uh, like literal speech. And the three aspects of it is language, like al lughawi The second is a shari the sharia. And the third one is al urfi The first language does not work. I mean, the first definition of haqiqah does not work with all three. It only works with one. It only works with how the people of language place their word. But the other two, they would have to be, how did the people that are using the speech, what was the definition that they gave to it? And we talked about how words, even if they are the same, they can have a like two different meanings. Like we use the word mouse. In the pet store, if we were to stick with the first definition, in the pet store and at Best Buy, it would be the same thing. It would be the rodent, right? But if we go with the second one, Depending on where the person is, it could be the Best Buy mouse, the computer mouse, or it could be the rodent. Then today we are going to, and then the Shari words are, are like words that were taken that had previous meanings or still have some meaning, and they were given a Shari definition. So like Salah, Zakah, Ramadan, Hajj, all of these things are different. For example, Salah, we said that it is, you know, words and actions that begin with Takbir and end with the sleep, the salat. In the language itself, it is dua. When a person makes dua, they make salah. The next category that we're going to talk about is al majaz. Al majaz, metaphors. Right? He gives the definition where he says that it is something you remove from the mawdu'. From the way that it was intended to be used to mean something different. The so metaphors. And he says they happen in one of three ways, or actually one of four ways. He says, You add a like an addition to the word or to the sentence, and now this becomes it goes from being literal to something else, to being the opposite. Oh nuqsan or by removing something. Or naql, or a lexical shift. A lexical shift or a language shift. Or isti'ara, and this is metaphors. These four definitions that he gives, technically this is, like you would study this in uh, al-Balagha. You wouldn't study it in usul al-Fiqh. 
But again, like, you know, if, if we did a different book on Usul al-Fiqh, the way the book would be structured would start with the Quran, the Sunnah, Ijma', and then everything else would come. But he structured it differently, so you get, you know, a wider view of it. So, Majaz, metaphors, it is something that is widely used, any of these is widely used in Arabic speech. Like the way that a person uh, would talk. Generally, you would use it like in dua. When a person makes dua for you, most of the time, there we don't intend the actual word of the dua that we're making. For example, if somebody said, May Allah brighten your face. Right? In this dua, metaphorically, we mean it to like brighten up the face. Linguistically, this is a curse. Right? Is a curse. One day, Hajjaj ibn Yusuf al taqafi when he was the, you know, a ghalim, we know who he is, he runs into a young boy by the name of Hassan that he used to teach Quran. And he told him while he was teaching him the Quran, one day I'm going to join the Khawarij. I'm going to join the Khawarij. So he catches him before he, you know, joins the Khawarij and they're talking to one another. So at the end of it, he says, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like to us, we would understand it, to brighten your face and to raise your status. And wa'ala ka'bak, like in the language, it means to elevate your, like make your uh, heels high. Hajjaj, he begins to laugh and he tells him, this dua that you're making, bayyad Allahu wajhak, that you're saying, you're telling, you're asking Allah to give me leprosy and blindness. Like this is what you're saying. This is like, this is in the Lugha, this is what it means. When your face becomes what, like bright or white, what happens to the eyes? The eyes become white when someone is blind or when someone has leprosy. And then he says, Wa'ala Ka'bat, you want me, like my actual heels to be high, crucified. And this is what you're intending for me. This is how you say. So he used the like technical term, the technical meaning, instead of using like the, 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 the way that we would use it when we say this dua. Like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us on the day of judgment, there will be faces that will be bright. And this brightness is, is from iman, not from like physical appearance. Right? So a lot of du'as, for example, I'll give you another one. When someone says, Allahu and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like give you the, the coolness, like give you a tuma'neen. Right? You're asking for tranquility for this person. This, like, in the language itself, that's not what it means. It means may your eyes, you know, the, the harakah that they do, the moving, may it stop. One day, you know, Harun al-Rashid, the Khalifa, he had an issue with the Baramika. What ended up happening is they began to waste the Ummah's wealth, and they planned a revolt against him. So he ended up killing the men, taking the women, and taking their wealth. So a woman enters upon him, and she says, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, aqarhu Allahu aynak, wa farrahaka bima atak, wa atamma sa'adak, wa atamma Allahu sa'adak, faqad hakamta, faqasadta. And he says, who are you to her? And she says this dua. She says, who are you? She says, I am from the Baramika. You killed our men, you took our wealth, and uh, you destroyed us. So Harun Rashid, he looks at her and he says, he says, as, as for the men, this is the qadr of Allah that has carried out. Them being killed, this is the qadr of Allah. As for the wealth, you can take it. So she leaves. And then he turns to the people that are you know, in the gathering with him. And he says, do you guys understand what she said? And they said, she made an amazing dua for you. She made the best dua that you could make. They said, that's, that's not what she did. Right? She said, her intention when she said, is, may it stop from fluttering. May your eyes stop from fluttering. 
And when I stop fluttering, what happens? You become blind. And when she said, You know, may Allah make you happy with what He has given you. Her intention is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hatta ida farihu bima utu akhadnahum bakhta wahum la yashurun. Right? Until they become happy with what we have given them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the mushrikeen, right? Allah gives to them. So she says, you know, her intention is let me become happy with it so that Allah can destroy me after. And may Allah complete your happiness. She said, he said, she took this from the saying of the poet. Right? He said, the poet said, when something, like, when, when you reach the peak of something, where do you go? You go down. There's nowhere else to go from the top except that. Right? And then, uh, like you should just begin counting away the days once something is completed like you are going to be like life is going to horrible times are coming because you've reached the peak and there's nowhere to go and when someone says I'm done just know now disasters are coming then he says when she said right? what does this mean you have ruled and you have been just like this is how we would understand this he said, her things is, This is what she's saying. And really, between us understanding al-qast to mean just and al-qast to mean this, it's the fatha and the, the kasra, right? In the language, you have with a fatha, qasat, and you have qist. In Allah, you have al-muqsitin. Al-muqsitin is the, like al-muqsit is the fa'il from who is just. Al-Qasid, he is the opposite. It's just with that fatha. You know when Hajjaj ibn Yusuf, again, we bring it up, when he was killing, like he was about to slaughter Sa'id ibn Jubayr, one of the leaders of the tabi'een in terms of ilm and, 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 and so, he brought him and he said, you know, these are your last moments. What do you say about me? He said, you are Al-Qasid al-Adil. The people around him, they started to say, how can you kill someone that says this about you? You are al qasit and you are al-Ad. He said, this is not what he means. <laughs> what he's saying is al qasit the ma'na of it is, فَأَمَّ فَكَانُوا لِجَحَنَّمَ حَطَبَ right, Those that were oppressors, those, were, those that had a dhulm, they are going to be like the, for the fire, you know, the hatab, the uh, firewoods for the fire. And then he says, when he says al-Adil, we know al-Adil to mean just. But in the language, what does it mean? So he said, he said, his meaning of this is, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, the beginning of Surah Al-An'am, ثُمَّ إِنَّ Right, like they, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like they said, they, Al-Adl, like it means, also means like to make something similar, to make it like, Right, like these two things are the same, right? So he says, he's not, you know, he's not praising me the way that you guys think he's praising me. He's using these words in this type of manner. Even though al-adil, when we would use it, we would never intend it to mean the linguistic term, right? The linguistic meaning of the thing. We would take it to mean al-adil, the one that has adil. When the Prophet ﷺ says, there's going to be seven types of people that are going to be shaded. What is the first one? The just ruler, right? So this we would not say this usage of it is what we know it in the in the Luzah. Right? So she said, This is what she's saying. The way that she's talking, this is not a dua for me, but she's making dua against me. We whenever if if someone said to you, this is a dua for you, right? And how do we know it's a dua? Because it's not the actual Linguistic meaning is it's, it's what we have given it from majaz, from the figurative speech that, that we use. And we know that, you know, to Qurwat al ayun we find it in the Quran multiple times, right? We find it in the dua that, like in the, the plea that uh, the wife of Fir'aun makes to Fir'aun to keep Musa. He says, Allah will make him Qurwat right? Don't kill him, he's going, 
Maybe he'll grow up to be like the coolness of you and I, like our eyes. So that is like generally how metaphors are used in the language. Now, he says on the next page. Wait, wait, so all of this is the Sahara or all no, of these? All of these, no, just, just Majaz in general. Ah. So we'll go into all of them because he gives uh, some of the details. We went on a little bit of a tangent. So, what, is, what was the knuckle again? A knuckle is lexical shift or language shift. So what's an example? He'll give us an example. That's what I was asking. No, so the next page he goes over all of them. What was this now? is metaphors. And we'll go. So the whole section is metaphors, but sections like portions of metaphors. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's what it is. Right? The last the stara is the metaphor we normally understand as a quick metaphor, but he's yeah. gonna give us some more examples in the other three. So he begins the page and he says, Al Majazu Biziad. Metaphors or figurative speech. When you add something, it is like the statement of Allah Laysa Kamithlihi Shay. Laysa Kamithlihi Shay. Now, you know, with Ta'addu Ma'al Quran, we do not say that there's any increase inside of the Quran, that every single word that is placed there is there for a purpose. Right? Like every single verse, every single harf, every single, it is there for a purpose, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it. The reason that he brings it here is because the understanding of his is a person that is studying this should already know some verses from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are some verses that a person should know before they deep, like you can't learn usul al fiqh. You know, this is a tool to give you an understanding into the book and the sunnah without knowing what those two are in the beginning. And always to them, the beginning of ilm is the Quran, right? So he's giving you this like, you should already know this. You should already know this verse is there. Now, the ziyadah here, who can tell me where it is? Where is the increase? Again, like increase in terms of language. Huh? The kaf. The kaf, the kaf here is a ziyadah. Like if you took this, if you went to somebody, and they specialize in the language, Arabic language, and you say, he would tell you there's no need for the calf to be there. This is a ziyada. This is like an increase into it. But here in the Quran, what it's actually doing, like if, if this calf was to be removed, you would have to say, no, mithla mithla hushay. Right? So when you actually do it like this, you have affirmed what you are trying to negate in the verse. What is the verse negating? What is this verse telling us? There is nothing like Allah, right? Nothing that is similar to Allah. This is what the verse is saying. If you took the calf and brought, brought you know, the, the mithil, and then mithlahu shay, so you'd have these two words, there is nothing that are similar that could be compared to God. Now the negation of it is gone. But with the calf, you are negating anything possibly being like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? This is known as a calf at Toki. Like you are overemphasizing that there is nothing that is similar in any fashion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another example of like a ziyadah, like in the Quran itself. You find the verse, وَيَوْمَ تَقُومُ السَّاعَةُ أَدْخِلُوا آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, when, on the day of judgment, we are, like, the command will be to enter آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ أَشَدَّ الْعَذَابِ into the worst punishment. Here, who is it talking about when it says آلَ فِرْعَوْنَ? فِرْعَوْنَ himself. So the آل here is what? Ziyadah. Yeah. So the verse is telling us he's the one that's going to be in the worst punishment. So this Allah, even though it's, it's telling you like, we would say the family of Surah, this is, he himself is the one that will be told to enter into the worst types of punishment. So this is there. And then you have Al-Majaz, metaphors bin nuqsan when you remove things from the sentence of the structure or the, 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 the structure of the sentence, you remove something to still get the meaning. For example, he says, 
The example of it, it is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَاسْأَلِ الْقَرْيَةِ اي أَهْلِ الْقَرْيَةِ When you say, وَاسْأَلِ الْقَرْيَةِ, you're saying, like a literal translation would be, to ask the village, or to ask the town. What is a town? We know it as the buildings, the uh, walls, the houses, the people. All of this is the qariya. If you go, you can't go and ask the walls. They're not going to answer. Right? So what they're saying is, this is in Surah Yusuf. They accused uh, in Ibn Kassar, your child has stolen. Right? Or, what is the response they give? Like, go and ask the, the villages that we had to cross to get here. The villages that we were in on the way here. And the caravans that we met along the way. You can't tell us he stole because if we were thieves, we would have stole on the way here. And that's what they tried to say. But there's a something that is missing. But we know that like we understand what is meant by it. So this is Al-Majaz bin Nuqsan, with something removed. And the thing that is removed is Al-Ahl. Go and ask the people of the town. Clear? And we do this even in, 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 uh, in English. The next one, he says Al-Majaz bin Nakl. Metaphorically, or, or the opposite of literal, with a Nakl, with a lexical shift. <laughs> this is something that the other people of Usul they have a problem with Imam al Juwaini rahimahullah placing it here. <laughs> and they say that metaphors, because of the definition that you have given us, all of it is not. All of it is, is shifting the language, usage, or something. Right? He said, what was the definition he gave us? Using it how it was not like intended to be used. Right? For example, if you say someone is like a lion, right? Someone's like a lion. We intend, like, what's the meaning behind that? You're not actually like a lion, but you are. You have some characteristics of the lion. So what you have done is you have moved the usage of the word lion, the meaning that it has, to a different thing. And all metaphors, oh my God. that's what they are, right? <laughs> like, all metaphors are switching the language. So a lot of the other Usuliyin, they say this is, the first meaning tells us, like, this is the meaning of majaz. All majaz is a nakl, right? You moved something. But the way that uh, we would defend him is we would say he means here this a nakl when it does not have the other things that are mentioned. That it could still be metaphors. If you don't have the ziyada, if you don't have the nuqsan, and if you don't have the isti'al. If you don't have these three, it is still a metaphor because the word has moved. The, the usage of the word has moved. In English, for example, you have the statement, when you're dating somebody, what does that mean? I'm dating somebody. I'm in a relationship with this person. When you say I'm courting somebody, what do you say? This is how old it used to be used, right? Like I'm, I'm same similar thing. These words like changed in the usage of it, right? So when you do that, this is now like the word itself is a meaning of a metaphor. The example he says he says kal ghaiti fi ma yakhruju min al insan. Al-ghaiq, the actual usage of the word in its like intended place. What is al-ghaiq? Here he says, فِيمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنَ الْإِنسَانِ So it tells us there is a different meaning for al-ghaiq before we know it today as being what leaves the people when they go answer the call of nature. So what is the, like what was the shift? What was it before? What gave it this, this name? Al-ghaiq? It means, you know what, like a, a place that, like land that is low. Right? You know, when you have, like say you look out and you have like, uh, we say, you know, rolling hills, right? You have like places that I go like this. Al-Ghaiq is this place where it's like at the bottom, 
and it's low and it's hidden. They used to go and answer the call of nature by going to those low places because people wouldn't see you and it would, you would be hidden. When we look at the hills and we see like this, these different things, the first thing that we are looking for is, is not like, it's hard to see the low parts of it. But if people are standing at the top or like near the top, we're able to see it. So to answer the call of nature, they would go into the, like the lower places. So this was the actual wording of it. Then they decided that instead of just calling the Makan, the actual place, al ghaib even the thing that you do there is called al ghaib So when you go and you answer the call of nature there, this is now in the Arabic language. al ghaib means what comes when you go and answer the call of nature. And this is a shift, like the lexical shift, the usage of the word shifted. So now my question to you guys, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says al ghaib in wudu, uh, this al ghaib here. What is it talking about? Place. Talking about the place. But is going to that place, does it necessitate us making wudu? Yes or no? No. No. Going to the bathroom doesn't today, like if you use the bathroom, going there doesn't necessitate us use having to make wudu. So the intended meaning is when you go there to do what you do at this place, you have to make wudu. Where? That is the lexical shift. This type we see it like a lot in the English language. Right? Metaphors are like this type generally in the English language. And then he says, well, majazu metaphors. Now, actual metaphors that, that we would go. He says, it is like the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, jidaran yuridu an yanqabba fa'aqaba. Right? What is this verse saying? There was a wall that you read, it wanted to fall. The question comes, can a wall have irada? Can it have a want? No, because a want is something that we have. The walls cannot have. So he brings this and he says, this is istiara, right? Now, my question is, why can't a wall have irada? Why can it not have a wall? A wall cannot have anything. A wall cannot have anything. It's simple. <laughs> what if I were to say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about creation, different parts of like different things of creation, the heavens and the sky, the earth, the mountains, the rocks. And he says, all of them are doing tasbih. <laughs> But you don't understand that speech. Is that? Can we apply that to the wall? Huh? Why can we not apply it to the wall? What makes the wall different than the, like a mountain? The wall is not a creation of Allah. I like that. Right? This is something that people built. Okay, like that. What else? I can only see why not. You don't see why not, we can do it? Made from stones and rocks and stuff. And these are things that do this week. Yeah. Right? So, there is like a little bit of pushback on this verse from the people that say, this verse, this is to Allah, Allah knows when something wants something. Whether it's, it's us or whether it's the rocks, whether it's the water, right, like a flowing river or the ocean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would know if it had what, what it wants, what it wants to do, right? So they say this, this is not, this is, this is knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Allah is saying that the wall wanted to fall, it means that Allah knew the wall wanted to fall, right? So there's a group of scholars uh, from them. You know, if you read uh, Adwa'ul Bayan, 
um, a recent tafsir last century on doing tafsir from the Quran, like Quran with the Quran. Right? And you don't add anything else. Just you look at a verse, where else does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us like the meaning of this? For example, you look at uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. You look at the word Alhamd. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention in the Quran of Hamd? And how do we understand it? Rabbul Alameen. Where can you find in the Quran Allah giving us the definition of Rabbul Alameen? Right? right. Uh, Fir'aun, what does he ask? Musa and Harun. Umar Rabbul Alameen. Right. He says, and who is who is Rabbul Alameen? What is the answer? Rabbul Sabbat. The, the, the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Right, so this type of tafsir, in there he brings, he says, this you read, this is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows it. Allah knows the world wanted to fall because Allah's knowledge is different than ours. But majority of the scholars, they, this is, they say this is a metaphor, right? Given human characteristics, sifat to something that's yeah, not a human. So this is what we know a metaphor as. Like this person, when we say somebody's a rat, we don't actually mean that person is a rat, right? That's not what it's intended, but there's a, they have some, like we're comparing them to, to this thing. Now, isti'ara, it happens in one of two ways. There is isti'ara that is like very clear. And for this one, you would have to bring, so metaphors, this one is ti'ala. You are comparing one thing to another, right? So you're comparing one to something else. When you do that, you have the option of bringing the thing that you are comparing it to in place of what is being compared, right? For example, if somebody says, الْأَسَدَ الْمَعْرَكِ That I saw, a, I saw a lion in the battlefield. Our understanding, this asset he's talking about is the human fight, like his character, like he was a lion on the battlefield. You have brought the object that you are comparing something to in place of the actual object. Another word you say, for example, the key to Damath, that I am crying. What am I crying? Blood. blood. What are you like? What, what is blood? What, what place is it taken? The tears, right? Generally, tears come, but now you're saying, like, I'm crying blood. This is known as al tasrih Like, you take the thing that is being compared and place it in the place of the thing that you're comparing it to. So when you say, I saw, like, I, like if you were to say, Zayd is a lion, you have both of them there, and this is also a tasrih You have what is being compared to what? Right, the asset is mushabbah and zayd is mushabbah, the thing that is being compared. <laughs> then, if you do the opposite, you bring a characteristic of something without the actual characteristics of, of the other, you would say this is al isti'ara mukanna. Is by mukanna. For example, you would say, if tarasa al muqatil aduwa. What is al iftiras? Something that the lion does. Uh, like it prays, right? Like praying uh, when it goes hunting. You have removed the actual animal. Uh, you, you, there's no mention of the animal, but you gave this characteristics to the fighter. You're saying the fighter preyed on his enemy, like he was going hunting for him, right? When it's done like this, this is al-isti'aratu bil Now, I have a question for you guys. Can you say there's majaz in the Quran? He just showed it to us. He showed it to us. Very simple. There are some scholars that negate Majaz being in the Quran. There's no such thing as Majaz in the Quran. And this, generally, it was done because, you know, what misguided the people? You know, for deviancy to appear, 
you had to look at the Quran and the Sunnah and understand things the way that they were like they were not supposed to be understood. For example, one of the first sects to come up in Islam were the Murja, right? And their core belief, like their main belief, is Iman is something that happens inside of the heart. Nothing else. It doesn't go up, it doesn't go down. Once you have the belief of Allah in your heart, this is done. At tasdiq right? This is what, what they had. And this comes from like Iman in the language. Right? To have Iman, like Lughatan, it means to have a tasdiq of something. Right? To have this belief. So they negated everything else that could be added to it. So to them, to their belief, if anyone believes in Allah, he has Iman and Allah is talking to him when he says, yeah, you're Obviously, this, this is not the belief that we have. Iman is not only inside of the heart, but it is on the tongue and on, the, on our limbs. For example, he believes, does he believe in Allah? Without a doubt, he believes in Allah. Can you say he has Iman? If you intend Iman like Lughatan in the language, yes, he does. He knows Allah. He affirms Allah is there. How many times in the Quran does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell us from his statements? He says, Inni Allah Rabbil Alameen. That I fear Allah, the, you know, the, the, the Lord of uh, everything, right? But this Iman is not what we like look at as Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells us in Surah Al-Kahf about, you know, the, the young group of people that went into the cave. Fazidnahum. Huda, like we, we increased in al Huda for them, like guidance was increased for them. Is there, can, can something increase if the belief is at like, does your iman in Allah in the heart actually go up or down? Does it actually do that when you do good deeds? Yes or no? Yeah, it goes up and down. This was a belief that they negated. And it was all because they took like, they misunderstood the alfav of the Quran, like the wordings that were used in the Quran in the Sunnah. So the scholars, when they started to see, like especially when the Mu'tazila came, they began to say everything in the Quran is a metaphor. There's nothing that's actual being literally told to us. Everything is a metaphor. To the point where they came to the verses that talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of it are metaphors. There's nothing about Allah that is telling us in the Quran that is little. Obviously, there's problems going to this extreme. The response to it came from another saying, there's no such thing as majas. There's no such thing as majas. But the middle part, where we try to be is, if we understand the Arabic language, it's impossible for us to say, there's no such thing as majas. Because this is the way that the Arabs would talk in their khutbas, in their poems, and in their speech, they would use majas all of the time. Like the examples we gave in the beginning of dua, like we are using in the same, those duas we're using majas. So there are times where in the Quran you find majas. And times in the Quran where there's no majas. There's no, this is not, we're not being told metaphorical things. We are being told actual things. What was the first book again? The first, the murja. One of the er earliest, so they denied uh, their like they had other issues, but their main thing was iman is something in the heart, it doesn't go up, it doesn't go down, right? It doesn't you sinning does not make iman go down, you doing good deeds does not make it go up. And then from there, you had you know the Mu'tazila who came with the belief everything's metaphorical, which is you know, you run into uh, a lot of the problems. This did become like the alhamdulillah today. Like, some of like you know, there are some sects that came out early that today, alhamdulillah, we don't find traces of them except uh, like today, like you know, being a someone that was a mu'tazim had a itizaz, these were things of back then. There are some people today, like very, very few, that that try to present like. Say this is the correct understanding of how we should be slept for some time. Um, 
you know, the children of uh, Harun al Rashid. This was what they championed amongst the people, the belief of al Um The reason today we say Imam Ahmed is known as Imam Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah is due to him standing not only like intellectually in front of the Mu'tazila and the beliefs that they had, but also to the state. Right? He had to go through uh, you know, the mihna, the trials, he had to you know, be jailed, he had to be punished, all of these, and he persevered. Even though there were others that you know, fell into uh, the beliefs that they had. And really, when, when they said, inshallah, uh, we'll talk about aqidah another time. <laughs> so we get to, to, to move away from, 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 from right here. And um, so these sects, they misunderstood, or like they understood it, but not like the complete way. The other extreme, like you had, you know, like the Khawarij, again, back to our Aqidah, like the Khawarij, they looked at the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they also only had a portion, like an understanding of it. For example, they went to Ali, عنه, they fought Ali, and what they used against him was the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ Whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed out, he's from the kafirs, from the kuffar. And Ali ibn Talib, it says his famous, famous words, كَلِمَةُ الْحَقِّ this is a truthful word that they're saying, intending falsehood with it, right? So when it comes to majaz inside of the Quran, there are places where we don't do it at all. Imam Ibn Abdul Bar, in his book at Tamheed, which is an explanation of Al Muwatta, of who wrote Al Muwatta? Imam Malik, right? And at Tamheed, this is when you look at like what books give you everything you need in a madhab? For the Maliki at Tamheed, this is their, uh, the work that it goes back to, um, you know, explaining the Imwata of Maliki. Beautiful new editions have come up. Uh, there's actually uh, a publishing house in the UK known as Al -Fur uh, Darul Furqan, or Furqan, like the Furqan Center of. Uh, Islamic preservation. Alhamdulillah, uh, they've printed the uh, Tamid, very nice, uh, you know, print. The cover on the uh, this side is English, on this side is Arabic. The book is, is is all in Arabic. But this is something that like we should just mention to see, like to really motivate us, right? If they're doing it in the UK, if they can have like a publishing house where they're publishing. These type of Islamic works, we here in Santa Clara, Silicon Valley, should be able to do what they've done, right? So they should be, you know, like thinking, thinking of things like this. So Alhamdulillah, they have a very uh, beautiful print in 18 volumes. Very, very beautiful. Expensive to buy here if you want it. I think it's uh, 540. Um, Alhamdulillah, I had uh, a brother of ours go to Egypt. <laughs> He brought it back to me. I only paid 175. Even though 18 volumes. I told him, I said, you know, you could get me one book, or you could get me, you know, these six books. And the six books were much smaller. But he said, I'll get you one book only. I said, okay, this is the title, go to the bookstore, get it. He goes, he was like, give me a tamheed. <laughs> so he brings a big stack. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's not finished yet. There's more to <laughs> Alhamdulillah, he was able to bring it back. Um, so next time, if any of you travel and I tell you bring a book, and I give, if I tell you one, <laughs> this is Majest. <laughs> there you go. Uh, you got, uh, if I tell you one book, don't think that you know you're gonna bring me one little book. You like said one title, not one book. <laughs> one, there you go. That's what you say. It's one book, one the title. It's not my fault. It's in multiple volumes, right? Um, so just keep that in mind for next time. You go to okay. Egypt and I'm I say, going to Egypt. Well, khalas, I mean, I think uh, our brother Muhammad is going soon. So. <laughs> You'll get the message on WhatsApp before you come back. You're like, I need one or six books. Which one do you want? All right. So he says in that book of At-Tamheed, he says there's Ijma' 
from the companions, from the companions that we do not use majaz when we talk about the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we talk about the verses that mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sifat, we don't say these are majazi, that they are like metaphorically. When we talk about anything about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are no metaphors inside of them. Right? Is this clear? Right. Any questions on what we have went over? Go ahead. I don't quite get the difference between istihara and uh, nafis. Like the, the example for nafis, mm -hmm. why can it not be istihara? Or why is she replacing the place with the comes out? It kind of works so, for me. Yeah. So, like we said, you know, the, 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 the scholars of Usul, the problem that they have with him, including a nut here, is metaphors in general, like the whole understanding is a nut. It's a lexical shift in the way that you use it or in the meaning of the word, right? For example, when he gives the example of al-ghaiq, there was a change in it. But we could still use it to refer to the place and to the action that you do inside of the place. So why are you bringing it here when all of these are a nut? Like there, there has to be a change. Right. The reason he puts it here, and I said like this is one of the ways that we try to defend him, is that with it he's negating the other four. I mean the other three things. Right. A major like for this one, al ghaiq it doesn't have a ziyada. So when we look at it, we can't say there's a ziyada here that would indicate to us that it's majaz. There is no nuqsan, like there's no subtraction that is being done. And al isti'ara, these are things like you can, like you're giving an attribute to something that does not have it from another thing that would have it. So when he says an naql here, we try to defend him by saying he means when these three other signs of metaphors are missing, even with just an naql, it would be considered al majaz. Is that clear? So that's what. Uh, you know. So maybe maybe the order is mm -hmm. maybe the order maybe the order should have been different. And not should have been first. First, first to say, uh, first to give an example of just not by itself, mm -hmm. and then say this is not, and then there's an a, an addition here, mm -hmm. or not, and then there's a, a subtraction, and then the final one is giving giving. Uh, uh, a comparison with yeah. something that it doesn't have so it's it's a it's a complete it is it is just two parallels it's, they're not the same thing mm -hmm. so it's just i think it's just um being very precise i think what the way he put it this way is he's trying to be very very precise in his meaning in his, in his, uh, the way he gives it to us yeah. breaking it down right but this is something like even if you look in the explanation of this the question is why is this here why, like, and we said that even before there are some things that, like, the way that he presented, not all of the Usuliyin agree that, like, this should be there. This is one of them. Like, again, their main argument, which is, is like, very hard to go against, is metaphors, this is how they are. Why do you need it to make, a, like, a subcategory if this is the, the literal meaning of what you gave us, to use it for what it was not intended, right? Why are you telling us here again when you already gave us this, when you said al-majaz, this is what it means. Right, so that's the, uh, the thing that they have with that. We are done. Uh, okay. So, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we look like in at tamid when he explains that the sifat cannot have majaz. There were one like the Mu'tazila and before them the Jahmiya. They came to the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they had the understanding, for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, like you use the example of a yad. We have the belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has two hands. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us, right? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us in the Quran, what did the Yahud say? Yadullahi maghlula. Ghullat aydihim walu'inu bima qali. 
بَلْ يَدَاهُ مَبْسُوطَتَانِ Right? Like, they are cursed for the making the statement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands are tied, or they're stringy. Right? Like, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is stingy in giving. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, the hands of Allah, مَبْسُوطَتَانِ مَبْسُوطَتَانِ is what? And مُثَنَّ means, like, two. And what's the actual meaning? Like, they're widespread. The Jahmiyyah and the Mu'tazila, they came to this. And they said, if we say Allah has two hands, we are making a tashbih. We are making him similar to us and saying that Allah has two hands. So we cannot take the understanding that Allah has two hands. right? Because this has to be to them, they said this has to be a metaphor. So the sifat of the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the way that they would explain it, is they would come and they would say, it means two powers, or it means two mercies. What is the problem with this? What makes one different than the other? When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he tells us, وَكِلْتَ يَدَيْهِ You mean that both hands of Allah are what? Right hand. They came to these, and these are authentic hadith from Jadid, and they said, we cannot say that about Allah. So the, like the actual descriptions, for example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, the hearts of mankind are Baina like in the, the between the fingers, from the fingers of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. They said, this can, we can, there is no way we can say that Allah has fingers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the shin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about his wajh, his face. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about like descriptions about him. So they came and they said, these are the sifat of Allah and they are metaphors. They cannot be literal things. They cannot be actual hands. They cannot be actual faces. They cannot be actual shins. Right? In all of the descriptions of Allah. Ahlul Sunnah, our belief. And not like not only like these are like like actual descriptions of Allah, but in actual things of like the sifat that are not, you know, like that here, like they're not actual sifat, like descriptions. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Ar-Rahman istawa. That Allah Ar-Rahman has done what? Al-Istiwa ala al They came to this and they said, impossible. Allah cannot do Istawa because Istawa it is from the A'mal of al makhluq from the creation. This is actions of the creation. Rising up on something, going to sit us. These are so Allah Istawa here, they said this means metaphor. And the actual meaning of it is Al-Istawla, like he, he took authority over it. When Imam Malik was asked by a person that came, and he said, كيف استوى? Allah says, Ar-Rahman wa ala al-Arsh istawa. How did he do it? Imam Malik became so angry. His face turned red. And he said that al-Istawa is, is ma'lu. We know what the word means. The Arabs know what this word, al-Istawa, when you use it, it means. Well, كيف? But the how of it. We don't, we, we don't talk about the how of these things. And asking about them. It's bid'ah. Remove him from this gathering. Don't let him be here. All right? So when we look at any description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the belief of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that they are as Allah has described. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does those things that he is telling us but we don't talk about how he does it. We don't talk about the kafiyah, nor do we make them similar to the actions of the humans. But we don't negate them from actually happening. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does he do in the last third of the night? He comes down to the lowest heaven of the earth. Do we believe Allah actually does this? We do. The Prophet told us. How does Allah do it? That's up to Allah, the way that it befits him. وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا That Allah and the Malaika are going to come on the Day of Judgment. 
this coming is an action of who? It's like we would understand it going like this, right? Coming somewhere. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it happens, but we don't know how. And this is the belief of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Now, Al Bukhari, he says, I asked my teachers, and 70 of them, they told me, when it comes to the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believe in them the way that they have come to us without asking, without making comparisons to the creation. We don't say the coming of Allah is like the coming of Behemoth. The rising of Allah, the nuzul of Allah, these actions of Allah, they are not like the actions of the humans. We believe in them as they are without this. The Jahmiya and the Mu'tazila said, we cannot do that. If we just even believe that the word yad means actual hand as we understand it, you have already made a tashbih. You have said that Allah has a hand. And there's only a hand like the hand of the human. Right? So this was the fitna that they came with. They said, therefore, it has to be, the sifat have to be metaphorical. The sifat have to be metaphorical. The jahmiya, they did not last like in the, like this belief of theirs, even though like over time it changed and the Mu'tazila adopted it, they did, they, their extreme in the way that they looked at the sifat of Allah reached the point where they came to the conclusion, Allah is not real. Because when you negate everything about Allah and say metaphorically, right, for example, when they said the nuzul, they said he, he does nuzul, and he does not do it. So what they ended up doing is like in this thing, they, be, they just completely negated Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Jahm ibn Safwan, the one that came up with disbelief at the end became a disbelief. The Mu'tazila came, they took some of the beliefs of the Jahmiyyah. And there was a time where they were like victorious in terms of the state pushing it on the people. And from there, like one of the thing that really outdid them was the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran. If everything is metaphorical about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means the kalam of Allah, which is the Quran, has to be something that is makhluq. It has to be created. It cannot be like the words that we read in the Quran cannot be actual words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in their debates, one of the questions that was asked was, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the Quran, and the Quran is from the ilm of Allah, from the knowledge of Allah, then there had to be a time where Allah did not have knowledge and he had to create it. And then at that time of the creation, he gained knowledge. They said, what, what Muslim would be able to say that? That part of, like Allah's knowledge is created for us to, like for him to gain knowledge, right? So then eventually uh, you had, you know, three sons of Harun Rashid. You had Al-Mu'tasim, Al-Wathiq Billah, uh, Al-Mu'moon, all pushing this agenda. The least in terms of pushing them was Al-Mu'tasim, Al-Mu'tasim Billah. He died, and uh, his brother that takes over after, this is finished. This belief of the Mu'tazila being enforced by the state, those times are over. Imam Ahmed was you know, released, and he was able to go back to uh, his teaching and so on. Right. So when we, when we look at the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we affirm them as they have come. When Allah says, Yadu Allah tawqa aydihim, that Allah's hand is above the hand when they're given the bay'ah, we take it as it has come to us without making a okay, and without negating them, without coming to another conclusion to say, or like taking the word to say, this is what is actually intended. Right? We don't mean, like for example, like you know, the more you look into it, the more that you realize, okay, there, there, there's some issues. Right, that, that, that come with, with making the sifat of Allah like metaphorical. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the favors that he gave to Adam is what? Over the rest of us. 
We know Asma. In his creation, what is the thing that Allah says? No, when 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 Iblis refuses, what is one of the things that Allah says? What what prevents you from making sujood to the one that I created with my hand? When they came to this, they had to make, like this hand Allah is mentioning, they had to bring metaphor. So you know what the, the result was? <laughs> the result of the metaphor here was Allah created him with this power. So does that make sense in Allah talking to Iblis saying, I created him with my hands? Wasn't Iblis also created by the power of Allah? Weren't the malaika created by the power of Allah? Weren't we created by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by the qudra of Allah? So why, why would Allah use, like this would be, be, it wouldn't make sense. Why is he getting this favor? Like why is he getting like this, this being mentioned to us as a favor of Adam, when it's not a favor because all of us are created by the Qudr of Allah. All right, so this is where like, you know, taking the sifat of Allah metaphorically, this is where it left. Any other questions? You, you, you're the one who opened the questions here. <laughs> Alas, I know, I know. Questions are open now. Is the other one Nuqsan, are they linguistic only? So, no, nah, only linguistic. I think the whole metaphors are linguistic. No, no, I mean by Ziyad and like adding letters, removing words, or... So, like, give me an example. Here, like, what's al qariya So you remove, remove the, the, word, family, the, yeah. the actual removal. The actual word is, yeah. Okay. Any other question? What time is it? So it's past 11 hours. The question, so the, the saying was, That's third, what did he say? That was the first one. I believe in it as they come. Inshallah, if you guys want, after this book, we can go do a, uh, you know, we love Mongumat, so we love poems. You love poems. Well, you have to love poems. Easiest ways to master Knowledge through the Mandumas. We can do, there was a poem that was written by the son of Abu Dawood, known as the Ha'iyah. I think it's maybe 30 lines. <coughs> Talks about the beliefs of Ahlul Sunnah and Jama'ah and how people deviated in it. Again, 30 lines. Think about it, inshallah. 30 lines. 30 lines. I mean, we will we'll take. Uh, Usually, so we want to keep these classes 10 weeks, 12 weeks, you know, around there. You know, so that's really, if you think about it, it's 10 hours, 12 hours. Can we do that in one sitting in 12 hours? Yes, we can. We could even do it maybe six hours. But how long do I talk until you guys don't want to listen anymore? That's really what it is. So we have to keep you guys, you know, give you guys this break breakage. So alhamdulillah, jazakumullah khair. Uh, I wanted to go into Umbr today, but... Allah will go into it. We deviated, uh, we deviated a lot today. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot more here. If you go on one page at a time, we're not no, no. Finish this. So we have, it's 33. We have about 20 something pages. No, alhamdulillah. Um, next, when we come together next Sunday, inshallah, we'll try to finish all of Al Am and Al Nahi. Right, because they'll it'll be like bouncing off one another. Right, Jazakumullah khair once again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.